In this video, we'll go over lead code question number 70, climbing stairs. Here's the question. You are climbing a staircase that has n steps. You can either climb one step or two steps at a time. How many distinct ways can you climb to the top? We'll also assume that n is at least one. So for example, if the staircase has three steps, then the first way to climb the stairs would be to take one step, one step, and one step. So that's one way to climb the stairs. Another way would be to take one step, then take two steps. So that's the second way. And the last way would be to take two steps first, then one step. And that's it. There's a total of three distinct ways to climb the stairs. So first, let's look at the recursive solution. And once we understand that, then we can improve it using dynamic programming. So let's look closely at the very first decision you can make. Again, you can take either one step or two steps, and those are your only choices. Let's say you choose to take one step. Well, after you take that step, the next question would be, how many ways can you climb the remaining stairs? Your other option would be to take two steps. So similarly, after you take those two steps, the next question would be, how many ways can you climb the remaining stairs? Those are your only two choices, so we can now write the recursive definition, which is, the total number of ways to climb n stairs is, the number of ways you can climb n minus one stairs, plus the number of ways you can climb n minus two stairs. We also need to define the base cases. If a staircase only contains one step, then there is only one way to climb it, which is to take one step. If a staircase contains two steps, then there are two ways to climb it. You could take one step, then another step, or you could just take two steps at once. Now that we have the base cases, our recursive definition will work. So here's what the code looks like in Python, where the function name is going to be climb. This part here takes care of the base cases, so if n equals 1, then we return 1, and if n equals 2, then we return 2. If n is greater than 2, now we hit the recursive case, so we'll call climb and pass n minus 1, which is the number of ways you can climb n minus 1 steps, plus the number of ways you can climb n minus 2 steps, and we return that result. Let's visualize how the recursive tree looks. So let's say n equals 5, so we'll call climb and pass in 5. Since 5 is not 1 or 2, we'll make two recursive calls. We'll pass 4 to the first recursive call, since that's n minus 1, and pass 3 to the second recursive call, since that's n minus 2. We still haven't hit the base case on either of these functions, so we'll recurse again. Climb with n equals 4, we'll call climb 3 and climb 2. On the other side, climb 3, we'll call climb 2 and climb 1. Now we have reached some of the base cases. When n equals 2, there are only two ways to climb the stairs, and when n equals 1, there is only one way. The only recursive calls left to do is over here, and now we finally hit the base cases for everything. We can now find the answers by just adding up all the base case values, so the final answer is that there are eight ways to climb five stairs. So this is the fully recursive solution, and it works. But now let's take a closer look at this tree. Notice that we are calling climb with three twice here. We are also calling climb with 2 three times, and climb with 1 two times. The point here is, we're calling the same function with the same arguments over and over again, and this leads us to going down the exact same recursive branches multiple times. You can see that in this far left branch, with each recursive call, n gets reduced by 1 until we reach n equals 2, so this tree will have n minus 1 levels. And since each non-leaf node has two branches, this algorithm ends up running in O of 2 to the nth power time, so it's very inefficient. How can we improve this and avoid making the same function calls over and over again? That's where dynamic programming comes in. Instead of making redundant function calls, we're going to save our previous results and reuse them. Now there's two ways to do this, a top-down or a bottom-up approach. I'll be focusing on the bottom-up approach in this video, since this approach allows you to eliminate the recursion entirely. So let's say there are five steps again, but this time we'll create an array that goes from index zero to index five. The value of each element is going to represent the number of ways you can climb a staircase where the number of stairs is equal to the index of that element. So for example, the value at index three should be the number of ways to climb a staircase with three steps. The idea is to start at the beginning and reuse previous values to build up all the way to index five. So to start, we'll need at least two values, so let's fill index zero and index one with one, since there's only one way to climb one stair. Now, I guess you could argue that there's actually zero ways to climb a staircase with zero stairs, 
But for this implementation, we'll have to start with one, and you'll see why in a second. So we'll start filling in values at index two. And the question is, how many ways can you climb a staircase with two steps? As we know, the recursive definition is, it's the number of ways we can climb one step plus the number of ways we can climb zero steps. And as you can see, we already have those values. One plus one equals two, so there's going to be two ways to climb a staircase with two steps. Next, let's find the number of ways for three steps. And that's gonna be the number of ways to climb two steps plus the number of ways to climb one step. And again, we have those values, which are two and one. So there's a total of three ways to climb three steps. And we continue these same steps. The value of each element is the sum of the previous two elements. So instead of making the same recursive calls over and over again, we calculate each result only once and reuse them to build this array from the bottom up. We're now finally at index five, so we're going to add the number of ways to climb four stairs with the number of ways to climb three stairs, which is five plus three, which equals eight. So now we know that there are eight total ways. The big difference using this method is that we only had to traverse an array of length n plus one once. So the dynamic programming method reduces the runtime to O of n time. I'll also point out a fun fact here. If you look closely at the sequence of numbers, you'll see that this is actually the Fibonacci sequence. Each number is the sum of the previous two numbers before it. So what this question is really asking you to do is to find the nth Fibonacci number. There's also one more optimization we can make. Right now, this algorithm also runs in O of n space because of the array that we have to make, but we actually don't need this entire array. To fill in any given element of this array, we only need to know the previous two elements before it. That's it. So now let's look at the code and I'll show you the bottom up dynamic programming approach that runs in O of n time and uses constant space. I'm going to bring over this array diagram from the previous section, but I want to emphasize that this array does not exist anywhere in memory. I'm only leaving it here so that we can make the connection from the previous section. So first, let's assume n equals five again. The base case is if n equals one, in which case we'll just return one. This is not true, so let's move on. Then we'll create a variable called one before and set it equal to one. In the array diagram, this variable corresponds to this element here. So it's the element one before the total number of ways that we're about to calculate. Similarly, the next variable will be called two before and also be initialized to one. So that corresponds to this element in the diagram here. It's two elements before the total that we're about to calculate. The last variable to declare is called total, and for now, we'll initialize it to a dummy value of zero. Then we'll start the loop to build up our answer. We already took care of the case where n equals one, so we'll start at two, and since the Python range function excludes the ending index, this will end at index five. We don't directly use the i variable in this loop, so I'll keep track of it here. So first, let's calculate the total, which is going to be one before plus two before, which equals two. As you can see, we're doing the same thing as what we discussed before, where we are adding the two previous values together. Then we need to update one before and two before. In the diagram, this means shifting them to the right. So we'll set two before equal to one before and set one before equal to total. And now you can see that they've been shifted. Now we're ready to loop again and calculate the new total. Total equals two plus one, which is three. And again, let's update the two trailing values two before will become two, and one before becomes three. And then we do the same thing. Notice that since now we aren't using an array anymore, no matter how large n is, we only need to use these three variables to build up our answer. So we're using constant space. Now we're at the last iteration. Total is five plus three, which is eight. Two before is updated to be five, and one before becomes eight. But at this point, we're already done, so all that's left to do is return total which is eight and we're done.